Season four of The Good Place will be the last, sad but true. Um, our writers and creator have decided that this is where the story ends. And I think they did it with a lot of integrity. We're not gonna draw it out to hundreds of more episodes and allow our viewers to get bored. This is where these characters' story ends. This has been one of the most joyful jobs I've ever had. Um, it has satisfied my, all of my creative bones because I think it's so funny and smart. And it satisfied all this, my social bones because I love this group of people and all my maternal bones because I, I'm really proud to be a part of a show that's saying something, that's asking people to be thoughtful and caring towards one another. Big ideas, tough information, uh, the trick is make it digestible. Um, and our show takes some really big philosophical ideas and wraps them in a fart joke. And it goes down real easy. Hearing things like that, like 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, it's, I mean, it just makes me feel gobsmacked that I was lucky enough to be involved with something that um, became important to other people. That's kind of all you want. It's all I want as an artist is for people to want to watch what I'm doing. And if they don't want to watch it, then I want to do something different because I just want to contribute to fun and entertainment and joy and to also have a show that, 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 that I feel is meaningful it feels really special and flattering um, to know that I'm a part of a piece of art that people love. It's a pretty special, um, hard to articulate feeling. And I'm very proud to have been a part of this set. First of all, I love that kids are watching it. I absolutely love that. I hear about like nine-year-olds watching it with their parents and look, I have to watch a lot of kids shows too. Some of them are brutal, okay? It's really nice to have a piece of art or something on the television that both the parents and the kids like. Um, I get especially jazzed when I hear that kids are watching it because I like all of these sort of hidden messages. These just things are sliding into your DMs. You don't even know it about what it means to be kind. Why? Why do we need to be kind? How are we supposed to share this place together? How do my actions affect you? And it's, it, it is presented in such a goofy, silly, digestible way. Um, I think that's what makes it appealing to everyone. It's also, you know, a bright world. There's a lot of, you know, stupid, big set piece jokes. Like we filled that entire fountain with clam chowder. Like I don't know if you could tell me another show that's even come close to a weird prop like that. One of my favorite feelings on planet Earth is to watch people celebrate celebrating things. It's why I love rabid television fans. It's why I'm one of them. It's why I have costume parties for my favorite shows. So when I see people dressing as our characters or putting the concept of envy on their hot sauce bottles or anything from our show, it reminds me that we were a part of something that reminded other human beings of a commonality. We were a part of something that brought people together. And it's just a really profound and special feeling. We kind of proved it at the end of last season that family bonds, love, caring for people, caring for each other is very powerful. It is so uh, emotionally charged and so loving the end of last season. This season takes that and just runs with it the emotional connection and what it means to truly love and be loved. You, I promise you, will not be disappointed. I am so sorry, I can't give it away. There's more visual magic going on. We have special effects that are just blowing our, our minds. Um, yeah, you will, you, you, we do not vamp, we do not, 
you know, we are constantly making those famous left-hand turns where you just don't know where that came from. Uh, we have wonderful guest stars, wonderful group of actors. Yeah, it's really wonderful. The Bad Place is very active trying to sabotage our experiment. So we're constantly having to deal with new revelations. We have to, you know, bob and weave to stay ahead of the bad guys. The cast of The Good Place got a phone call from Mike Shore. I, I, th I think maybe the second or third episode. Uh, that we were shooting and he said that this will be the final season because he had a story to tell about the universe and that story will have been told by the end of the season and and they did not want to pad it um, they wanted it to be like it's always been you know this is what we want to say we're gonna say it and then we're through kind of thing so it was it was uh, startling to be canceled by yourself <laughs> as it were but I, everyone had a huge amount of respect for it because it felt right i cannot tell you how happy i am to be shooting this final episode it feels so complete uh, i think uh, emotionally for the characters you will be so happy and for what it is saying, you will be so satisfied. Uh, and I wish we could talk after you see it. I love 12-year-old kids coming up to me in airports and telling me how much they love The Good Place. And I love that their parents are happy that they're watching it and they're watching it with them. And it's, um, it's fun to be part of something that's about something. You know, it's about decency. It's about what it means to lead a meaningful life, a purposeful life, and that there are consequences to our actions. Uh, I like that. That's a good thing to put out there. And it's kind of bathed in this and disguised in nine-year-old fart humor, and it's sprinkled with visual magic. So it's, you know, enchanting, but we are talking about good stuff. So many surprises, brand new cast members, an insane storyline, and my gowns are pretty amazing, as you can see. I don't know if there will necessarily ever be another season one finale type twist, uh, but I don't think they need that. The writing is so exceptional that they will still do things that are so unpredictable and, and creative that it will blow your mind. Every week reading the script is just so exciting. The reason I think this show is so successful and resonates with so many different people around the world of all different ages uh, and backgrounds is because it not only is it funny and it's smart and it's full of Ted Danson's face, uh, which I think in itself is enough. And this is a show about empathy and this is a show in which the essential messaging of it is when people who are very different, who don't like each other and they come from very different backgrounds, put their differences aside and work together, they can get to a better place. And so I think that's a message that we all need right now more than ever. And so I think it speaks to a lot of people. I think a lot of people feel that way and want that, but we just need our society to sort of catch up with us. And again, Ted Danson's in it. Need I say more? Our visual effects team have gone to such extremes this year, it's so cool. And it's really nice to be back where we can play fully with our imaginations and, and the writers can just come up with anything they feel like. I mean, some of the things that they're pulling off this season, we're about to shoot an episode in two weeks that I can't tell you anything about, but I can tell you it's going to be so visually stimulating. I can't wait. Well, I'm forking furious frankly, that this is the final season of The Good Place, but uh, I also really understand and respect Mike's decision. Like, we have created such an interesting and perfect arc, and he's got too much class to milk that just for cash. He, like, he knows when to leave the party, and I, I admire that, and the journey feels complete. This feels like the right place to say goodbye. Um, 
I'm gonna miss Ted very much. Uh, I can't believe I'm not going to spend summers with him any longer, but I can't believe I had the chance to do this. This was my first ever acting job. This was my first ever audition. This was my introduction to acting, and I got to learn everything from Ted, uh, both as an actor on screen and off screen. And so uh, if I'm bad in this TV show, it's because of Ted Danson, and I'm sorry about that. And he's sorry. I think it's incredible and it's so cool that this is a network show, it's like a big shiny network show that has reached such mass critical success, it just makes me feel very proud. I, I agree with the people, uh, not necessarily my performance, um, but mostly just the fact that our writers are the best writers I've ever met and they're so annoyingly young and gifted and lovely. I think that this is the coolest way we could have said goodbye to this show and said goodbye to our fans. I don't think anyone's going to see this ending coming. I definitely didn't. I was like, it's going to be a reality TV show in the end. I was coming up with all sorts of stupid ideas and I didn't see this coming at all. And it's going to be so thought provoking and it's so emotional. It's so heartbreaking, but it's a huge message about not taking things for granted and, and how we measure our happiness that I think will really resonate across the world. And uh, I feel so sad to say goodbye to the show, but I couldn't think of a classier way that he could have orchestrated this. The Good Place is back for a brand new season. We're so excited, season four, get ready for it. This season is an adventure, like a major, we're, we're like on a, on a wild ride, like a roller coaster. There's ups, there's downs, there's turns, there's flips, there's, you know. The writers are really dedicated to that. They really love to, um, there's this thing they love to do, which is set up like a, a cliffhanger at the end of every episode which is, I know our audience loves it, that we love it, we love doing it. It's so fun for us. And um, yeah, I, I, I love that they kind of keep, the writers keep coming up with different kinds of twists and turns, that it's not the same like, gotcha, it's not that every time. There's, there's even if you think you're gonna know how it's gonna end, they're, they're gonna switch it on you. It's always funny because I'm on the show, but I'm also such a fan of the show. I think of myself as like an audience member. So as an audience member, as someone who loves the show, um, I, I will love this season. I will love watching this season. The fact that little kids and parents and grandparents watch the show together is so amazing and so special to us. I feel like more people that stop me on the street or stop us on the street say that, that they watch it with their kids or their, whoever. They're from, from age this to that. Like there's no, it seems like everybody watches it. And parents say it's so nice to have something that they can watch with their kids. And I know when I think back to my childhood, the shows that I watched with my parents, that is, those are special memories to me and those are special shows to me. And the, and the idea that people do that with this show is awesome. The thing about this show is that it is a philosophy lesson, a moral lesson wrapped in a fart joke. And that is like the, the like about the show is that you are learning something while you're laughing and you're not, you don't feel like you're sitting in front of a chalkboard like doing homework, even though when you're done, you're probably gonna have a conversation with somebody about like what it means to be a good person. And, and it, those are the themes that keep coming up. It is the final season of The Good Place, which is both sort of heartbreaking and exciting. Um, I've always been a fan of shows that kind of like go out on a, on a high note or go out on top and don't overstay their welcome, even though as a fan it can be very painful. But I, you know, if you're watching your favorite show, seasons and seasons and seasons go by and all of a sudden you're kind of like, hmm, am I, am I over it? Are they over it? Are the writers over it? There is something I really like respect about Mike Schur and our writers deciding this is the final season. Although it makes me very sad. That's just the truth. Um, but uh, they, they have a story to tell and they know the beginning, middle and end and I you know, can't fault them for that at all. That's, to me, that's very respectable. So this has been the best job of my life 
Um, I have learned so much and uh, made such good friends. I mean, saying good friends almost feels like not enough. Like you truly do become family with um, your crew and your cast when you when you work together so so much for so long and doing something that means so much to us. This is like a lifetime. The, the, these relationships that I've made on the show will, they're not done after, after we're done. Ugh, it's sad, it's sad. It's so exciting that The Good Place received 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. That means what, not one Rotten Tomato? That's cool. That's really exciting. Not one single Rotten Tomato. It's hard to like really understand the way the show you're on affects people. You kind of see it on Twitter and you kind of see it when people come up to you. A big way that we've seen it is like at Comic-Con when people are, you know, they wait out in line overnight or a, a weird specific way that we knew the show was affecting people is on Halloween. A lot of people dress like us, which is something that is so strange and surreal. And I remember after one Halloween, my mom said to me, in my wildest dreams for your career, I never imagined people would dress like you for Halloween, <laughs> which I was like, yeah, you would never, that's not something you would sort of aspire to, but it's such a cool way of people saying like, we like this weird show enough to, you know, make the costume because this is not sold at Macy's people you got to make it well last season um Eleanor and Chidi rediscovered their love for each other um they found out the secrets of the universe in a very conscious way um they know that they were in the bad place and that the 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 game is is somewhat rigged and um, in order to, to save humanity, we have to sort of basically uh, run an experiment with, with new humans. And um, in order for, for, for me to do that, well, one of the humans that they choose is Simone, who is my love interest on Earth. And in order for me to teach them ethics and help them improve in the afterlife, I have to have my memory erased so I don't give up the secrets of, 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 of where we're at and sort of doom everyone and condemn the experiment. This is going to be very different. Um, I mean, as every season has been from the previous one, it's, um, but it's, we aren't necessarily together, you know? We start out in, in, in very different places. Uh, you know, Chidi has no memory of his friends, and so that's going to, that's going to make for some very interesting storytelling. Now that we are back in very solidly uh, the afterlife, we're in the good place again. Um, I'm I'm really happy for for people to see some of those really zany magical elements that we've had before sort of come back in here and there. Um, you know, because last season we spent a lot of time on Earth with you know some little things here and there, but now we're back in a world where anything goes and it does and so i'm i'm really i'm really excited for people to see that again i really like just going on the ride with the audience um you know unless there's something that is germane to my character that i need to know about later on that's going to influence things earlier on in the season i kind of like to just go in blind and let it surprise me and it's, you know, it's just like it's a little more fun to just read these things for the first time and sort of be like gasping and, you know, guffawing like, like I was watching the show. The show is, it's an optimistic satire with bite. And so I think that if you need something to lift your spirits, you've got that. If you need something to to watch and commiserate and with, with the misery of the world and feel like someone else is seeing it, you have that. But, you know, it's all in one place. And it's, you know, we also have a lot of, a lot of really smart, snarky writers that are able to take some really, like, incisive shots at things that are plaguing our society uh, without it being preachy. And so I think that, you know, it, it, it's, it's a really comforting thing, but it's not just candy, you know. 
everyone's great. Everyone's great. This is, I mean, this is one of those jobs where we all know we're spoiled. Um, the the cast, the crew, everyone is is nice, professional, really, really good at their jobs. And you know, it's it's just nice to be able to trust everything and everyone around you. That you know, we're all in the, we're, we all want to, we all want to make a good thing, and we're all happy to be here, and we all really, really enjoy each other, and so. Yeah, it's 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 great. You know, it's good to be ending a show on our own terms, telling the story we want to tell, and letting it stay relevant, and not letting it just sort of tease out into something that is just sort of there. It's been great. I mean, like, this is like the biggest job I've ever had to date, and it is. It, it couldn't be with a better group of people. Um, I, I feel like I'm, I've been sort of co-opted into this, like, nest, you know, for for little baby birds to be nourished, you know, and so it's it's, uh, you know, it's it's really great. It just is like a really warm, friendly place to be, and you know, I'm just gonna miss, you know, coming to work with these people every day, you know. And I think people are really interested in having a show challenge them as much as make them laugh. Um, you know, unfortunately, this is, this is one of those shows that I, I think that, you know, it, you don't put it on the background. You, you pay attention and, and, and go on the journey with us. And so it's, um, it's, it's, it feels good to be a part of something that I think everyone feels ready for. It's, it's wild. I guess I don't really think about it you know, as, as a cultural phenomenon. I just sort of think like we're trying to, we're trying to make a good show and trying to be honest and trying to deal as plainly with our audience as we can. So it's, you know, that blows my mind to, you know, I never thought I would have a job at all, let alone <laughs> like a job that actually seems to have worked its way into the zeitgeist in some way. And so that's, that's nuts. We can, we're going to take, for some of the characters, we're going to take a closer look at their, um, kind of where they came from a little bit and kind of uh, specific happenings of their life a little more, even more this season for some characters. Um, there's, I, I think we're going to get to know some new characters that were introduced to us last season a bit more and, and, um, and, and kind of see them interacting with characters that they haven't. Uh, interacted with. I think this season we're continuing on the path of like of of pulling the heartstrings, you know, uh, really getting into. I mean, it's still you know it's still a comedy. We're still going to be pulling the jokes, but you know I think we're really going for um, you know a deeper kind of heartfelt impact. Hopefully by the end of this. Uh, this season. VFX, you know, is crazier than ever. Um, I constantly feel like I'm in a Marvel movie, um, which is a, good, a great thing. Um, but yeah, it's uh, just another weird, weird and crazy ride. Yeah. You don't know what's going to happen next, and when you think everything is good, um, there's something that you know twists you and makes you look twice and um kind of ask uh wants uh kind of it uh forces the audience to ask for more we're kind of back in the good place in a sense a good place um so we're not really bound by you know the re realistic boundaries of being on earth so you never know what's going to come up by the end of that episode I think it appeals to all sorts of ages. I know my character appeals to a lot of kids. Um, a lot of five-year-olds um, think I'm dope, which is great. Um, uh, and yeah, I think it's just bottom line, just a feel-good comedy. I mean, it's, and it's definitely one that not forces you, but it it lets you become attached to the characters. I know th there's, I'm not pointy fingers or necessarily saying our show is unique but sometimes a comedic show can just be purely about the jokes and 
and just trying to pull those punch lines. But I find with a lot of Mike's stuff, whether it be you know in Parks and Rec or or The Office, it's he really gets into the relationships and and he digs deeper than just the the superficial joke. I'm just always happy when people get you know a laugh out of our show, you know and. And there have definitely been a lot of moments where I've laughed out loud, either reading the script or running through the scenes. Um, so for me, like, I'm just looking forward to people enjoying another season of us um, being out there and being goofy and weird and crazy. Um, yeah, that's kind of the bottom line for me, yeah. Just trying to come up with something um, yeah, it'd be nice, like like a yearbook almost, you know, or some sort of collection of photos that we can look back on uh, with this experience. It's, it's always special to be able to do that, you know, 10 years down the road when Ted has forgotten me and, you know, I have this proof that, you know, we work together, so.